Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will talk about weather APIs and I will show you guys how to create weather alerts for your WordPress website. I say for your WordPress website because I'm going to build a plugin for WordPress, a very easy plugin. There is nothing complicated. And also, if you have another app, web app, running on PHP, of course, you can use the same code because I'm not using, I'm, I'm going to use just just a function, uh, a WordPress function, which is going to generate a short code. But other than that, you can copy all that PHP code and use it on your PHP app. It's very easy. It's, it, you'll see when I will show you my code. But for right now, I'm going to use the weather.gov website, which is the National Weather Service website. And they have a really nice subdomain for this uh, API, for this kind of weather alerts. So if you go right now to alerts-v2.weather.gov, uh, you will see um, it's going to pop up this page in your browser. And this is a list of the states. But before we go into these states, let's click on, our, uh, on the documentation button. Let's read a little bit about this API. Now here on the next page, you'll find something like the documentation for alerts is now provided by and WS documentation page located at just click on that link and here we have few tabs so you have here the frequent frequent ask questions change log limitations for this service and then on the last one we can find a little bit more about this API so here um, you can find um, an example of the header you should use when you are trying to access this API they also tell you where the API endpoint is located. So it is on their subdomain, which is api.weather.gov. And then below here, a few actions. If you want to get more information about these alerts and, you know, different other actions, just if you are interested, come to this page and read everything from here. They also have different other kind kinds of APIs. This, this is just for the um, alerts. Uh, if you will search on Google uh, about you know, weather.gov APIs, you'll find a, a list of different other services. So let's go back to our to the main page from this subdomain and let's pick one of the states. I'm going to just take Illinois and click on the zone list button. Don't click on the name. Click on the zone list button from the right side. Click on that button. By the way, these numbers here are the um, amount of alerts for each state. And then here we have the zones from that state, from Illinois. So let's take, for example, the Western Arctic coast, which has an alert right now. These numbers are the number of alerts from today. And on the right side, you can see they have like a um, like a code here. This is their unique ID. If we can call it like that, let's call it ID. So each of these zones, they have a unique ID. Now using this ID, we will get the information about each of these zones and if they have any, we'll see if they have any alerts or not. Now I have my, oh, let me refresh it. I already tried it before. I'm just gonna remove this shortcut. I'll show you how to create this shortcut, of course. Okay, so I have WordPress installed. I just installed WordPress on my local host. And uh, I have a, a post here by default. So I'm just gonna, um, you know, I'll create a shortcut. I'll create a plugin first, and then uh, I'll generate a shortcode. I will activate my plugin from uh, from the dashboard, from the installed plugins. It's gonna appear here, and then you know I will use that shortcode. I will edit this post. I'll paste it there, and when I'll refresh the page, it should show me the alert from this from this zone. Now that PHP file I was talking about is just one. It's just a PHP file. And I have it in my Dolans folder, so I'm just gonna copy it and uh, just follow me right now. You don't have to copy any other PHP file. Just follow me right now. So go to your main folder, which is htdocs. Go to your WP content, and then open the plugins folder. And here, create another folder. I'm gonna call it. 
weather alerts open this folder and create a PHP file here it doesn't matter actually what name you choose for your folder and for your PHP file after you have done um, you created your PHP file just open it so my PHP file looks like this I already have the code before because this is not my first time when I'm uh, I'm trying to record this tutorial so on at the top of this file you can see you can see a PHP comment. This is a very important comment because WordPress reads this comment. I have here the plugin name, which is Weather Alerts. I have the plugin URI, it's my website here. Uh, then the description, the author, which is my name here. Author URI, you can have a different website for your uh, for the author than the uh, you know the plugin URI. And then the version here below and the license. You can even you can remove this one if you want. It depends for what, how you want to use it. And then below here, and it's another um, if statement which doesn't it checks and doesn't allow anybody to access this PHP file directly from their browser's URL. So if they type in here the location of this file, they won't be able to access this file. It's gonna it's gonna pop up this exit function. All right, so this is my function that I have it here. This is a really simple function, and uh, you can choose a name. Usually, when I work uh, on WordPress, on, when I build plugins on WordPress, and I create these kind of functions, I always have like a prefix or something like that before any of my functions name, because if you have any other plugins on your WordPress, and um, there's another plugin that's using the same functions name that you just you know, choose for your plugins, then it's going to appear where you'll have some errors and uh, you won't really understand why those errors happen to show up. So that's why I am always use like a prefix or something. You can choose whatever you want. And then in this function below, I have a, a variable which I, I assign to this variable uh, PHP a native function, which is CURL init. This URL unit um, starts a new CURL session. Okay, below I have another variable which is header, and I assign to this header an array. This array has uh, the header, as you, as you, if you remember from that uh, page right there, um, I was talking about, so they show you what kind of headers you can have. But in this case, I use this kind of header, so I use it like that, cookie here, and then I have the user agent. This, um, it looks, so the way I'm trying to access this API is like um, um, I'm using a browser because here I have the uh, Mozilla. And this is a browser here. Well, if you want, you can, you can use it in this way. If you want, you can change it. Um, it's up to you. You can use another, you can change the browser from here. And uh, I, I actually will leave this PHP file, leave a, um, a link to my github so you can go on this file and then see url set opt so i get the api's url here let me just access it right now and i have here at the end so you see this is there where, where the endpoint is so i'm going to their subdomain which is api.weather.gov slash alerts slash active slash zone and then I have my zone ID, which is AKZ201. So it's like AKZ201. And here I have, I have an alert. This is the alert that shows on the left side here, number one. They have just one right now. So this is how their API looks like. We don't need any password uh, for, for this example. We don't need to... We don't need a secret key or something like that to be able to access this API, which is making it easier. And um, let's go back to my PHP file. And here I also left a few comments. So we get this uh, API. And then we um, return it to our ch variable. So we get this API. We assign to the ch. And then... Um, below here we have the custom header so with all these three lines with all these three lines we access the API using the header and all the data from the header 
as you see here, like I have the browser and stuff. And this uh, C URL exec is gonna execute everything we have in this variable. Because I start the session here, and then I have here the API URL, and then I have the headers, and uh, and then below here when I use when I use this um, execution function, I assign all the data from this API to the result variable, and this data is in a JSON format right now. And using uh, the PHP native function, uh, JSON underscore decode, I can I can just assign all this JSON file as an object to the same variable. So I just reassign to the result variable the new data in an object um, in an object uh, format, if I can say like that. So right now results become an object, and it has different properties. And now using the CURL close, I just close that session. I just um, I opened it here, so I close that CURL session. And below, I just check if um, sub str with this function, um, you can, if you can say just cuts the string. So I'm going to the results object. I take the first component, which is features. So if I'm going to the API and look for features find it here this is the first step so in these features I have different other components the next one is properties so features I'm looking for properties properties here and then effective so on properties looking for effective right here effective here and this is the date the effective date and then I take from 0 to 10 the first 10 characters from this value from from the effective value. So the first type, first 10 is the year, the month, and the day. I just take these first 10 um, characters. And I take the first 10 characters and I check we if, because this is a date, and I check if the effective date is equal to the today's date, then this uh, location it means there is a you know there's an alert for today right and then if it is equal and I assign to my content variable I have here a div class which is weather alert and they assign the headline from the features properties and then the headlines value so I'm going to features here properties and the headline here and the headline has like a small small description or like a like a title which is winter weather advisory issued April 4th at 2 41 p.m akdt expiring april 5th at 6 p.m akdt by nws fairbanks ak well i assign all this data to my um content variable and i assign it in this div class which is weather alert I don't have this this um, CSS style. I don't have any CSS for this class. I will just add it somewhere here. I will see. And then otherwise, I just I don't assign anything to the uh, content variable, and I return it after that. And here, this is the function I was talking about. This is a WordPress core function, which is add shortcode. It generates a, a shortcode. The first parameter is the shortcode I choose. For, you can choose a name for your shortcode. I use it. I choose the weather alert, and then on the second parameter is the function name, the function uh, which this shortcode is gonna call. So I'm gonna call my function, of course. Okay, um, save this file. By the way, let let me go up here, and uh, I'm gonna do like this: go to your content here in the if statement and add a dot. And then after else, add a dot here, which is con it means concatenate, concatenate. And uh, here I have my content variable, and I assign to this content variable as a little bit of CSS for my uh, weather alert class. So I have style. And I have my class, and I'm typing here. Well, I have background. 
red color white heading heading 10 pixels and um, for the radius let's put five pixels I don't think that's gonna be good okay style weather alert. okay let's save it and let's go to the WordPress dashboard so I'm gonna refresh just go to your plugins install plugins and here you can see your uh, plugin which is in my case I have the weather alerts this is the um, author URL here and then the uh, plugins URL description version let's click on activate Okay, let's go back to the PHP file, copy your shortcode. Now this name and this one, the shortcode and the class, you know, name doesn't matter. You can choose whatever you want here. Okay, I copied that. I'm going to my um, post. I click on edit button here. I open a new tab here and I will paste it as a shortcode. Okay, this way. I click on update button so if I go back and refresh this page it, show, it shows me the alert from that API you know, it shows me this data because of the effective date you see is the same it's 4th of April and right now it's 4th of April so for today it shows I mean right now this function takes just the first alert so if there is if there are multiple alerts different kind of alerts for, for the same uh, zone uh, you can change this function you know add some extra code add, add a loop which will go through all those uh, alerts and if you want to show up them all of them you can do so or maybe you can just get the number of the alerts like how many alerts are for today and using that page as I showed you before like from the home page you go on the home page and on the documentation there there were different actions so if you get more details about a specific alert you can click and then there may be another function which is going to access the details of that alert you just have to read you have to read a little bit about this service but just search on google for more information if you if you want to create if you want to do a different functionality just type in weather.gov api examples were just weather.gov api and you'll find a, a bunch of other you know services they provide here on this page you have few actions for the api we just used but on google you can find a lot more okay guys thank you very much for your attention if you have any questions leave them in the comments i hope this video tutorial uh, is useful for you and see you in the next tutorial